Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. Today we're going to do a video for a door hanger using the laser. So first we're going to open up Lightburn. I think this is the best software for lasers. And you can see this is the workspace I have on my machine. It's a 700 by 500 size. So we're going to open up our Internet Explorer and we're going to look up Harding Wildcats football that's the high school that um, making this sign for so I'm clicking on images and I found the logo now usually we want to look for an SVG but in this case that doesn't exist so we're just gonna right click and save and we're gonna save this JPEG file that's a picture file and not a vector file so it doesn't stretch like a vector file would but we found this cool website called Convertio.co C-O-N-V-E-R-T-I-O dot C-O I'll leave a link in the description below what this thing does is you upload any file like we're gonna upload this JPEG file and then we select what we wanna export it as so we have a lot of options but SVG is typically what we like to use in CNC and lasers so I click on SVG and then we just hit convert it uploads the file, it converts it offline, and then after it's done, it'll have give you a download link. We'll click on download, and then we're just gonna go over back over to Lightburn, click on the import button, and we're gonna find the download file. We just download the SVG, and here we go. And you can see now we have lines. So it's as simple as that. A lot of times it's gonna give a great result. So now we're just going to resize this to what we need it to be. So the way I manipulate the canvas here is I click with the left click and hold it. And I zoom in and out with the mouse. And I click in with the mouse to move the canvas around. So now we need a picture of a football because we want a football on the outside and a wildcat on the inside. So I'm looking up football door hanger template. There's a lot of different ways to go about this, but I like to just kind of find an image that's out there. If somebody's already done the work, that's less work that I have to do. Then we're just going to look through all the pictures, and we're going to try to sort out between the paid and the free. And of course, I'm cheap, so I want free. I couldn't find a good one, so I added the word SVG at the end. That might give us a better option for what we're doing. So now I'm just looking through and trying to find the right football for my design. Haven't really found one yet. This one's pretty close. A lot of these go to Pinterest. And if I click on it, it'll take us to Pinterest with a lot of other options. And of course, those go to another site. So not super happy with what I found there. So we're going to go and look for some other ones maybe down in Pinterest. And there are other options. All right, after much deliberation, this is the one I found. I'm going to right click on the picture and save the image. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. We're going to do the exact same thing as I did with the Wildcat. Double click on the image of the football. We're going to right click show properties. And you can see now uh, it'll give us an option to trace it. So we mess with this threshold to make sure our lines are right and it outlines all the lines we want. Looks pretty good for me. So we hit OK and it overlaps our image. So you can just pull it out and there's a beautiful football background that I wanted. It does have a lot of this uh, names so we that I don't want. So we're going to ungroup using the people icon at the top. That'll allow me to just select the wording, and I can zoom in and delete that. I can select the old picture. I don't need that anymore either. And then these words kind of down below. That didn't really translate so well. But we got our two images that we actually need. We have our wildcat and our football. So this is perfect. Now we just have to orient everything we, the way we want, and it'll work out well. All right, first thing we want to do is manipulate the football to the size we need. And my bed is 700 by 500, but the piece of wood I'm going to use is a 24 by 24 inch piece of wood. 
So our football isn't grouped together, and we want it to be grouped. So when we manipulate one, we manipulate all. So I made sure to select it all, and I just clicked that rotate 45. That turned our 45 into a horizontal. And then we grouped it with the people button, so I can move it around. And I'm just going to grab the edge and make it as big as I want to make it. All right, so we're grabbing the edge, making it as wide as we can, and fitting it within my size of cutting. And then we're going to grab the wildcat, put it in the center there. So I want it right below, kind of fit it to where it fits in good. And that's pretty good. And when I cut these out, I'm going to cut it out where all the shapes lay on top of a, an football so it's going to be layered so the outside line we're going to cut on a piece of wood and just get a shape of a football then the inside laces and the wildcat and those two uh, big thick lines we're going to cut those shapes out and place it on top of that football so we're going to highlight everything and click output and make sure output is checked and it'll show us how long it'll take to cut this is, this is kind of what Shapes we're getting cut out here with that preview button. I can tell what's going on. And you can see I'm going to have an outside line and an inside line. I don't want that inside line on the football. So we need to remove that. All right, so we can see that it's going to cut out the wildcat really well. And our preview came out good. So we'll close that preview. And we're going to select everything to be ungrouped. So I can select one line at a time. So you can see I selected the inner football outline and I deleted that because I don't want that. Now I have one single football line around the outside, which is perfect. That's what I'm going to use to cut everything out. So I need something to hang at the top. So I'm going to use the circle tool and I want to make it a uh, perfect circle. So you can mess with that by using the lock to keep the aspect or I can just put in the same numbers width wise and height wise. So I finished this circle up by putting in the same numbers. You can see now it's a perfect circle. So now I'll be able to hang it up. So we're finished with that. Click on the little arrow button again so I can manipulate these files. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this to center. It's not too worried about perfection here. And then now we're going to use just the outside line and the circle we just made. That's going to be our first cut. So we're going to use the colors down below. These are our different layers. So if I want one cut with certain lines and another cut with other certain lines, we assign them different colors. So I selected the football and the circle and I made those blue. So now they are a separate item. And if I right click up in the top right in the cuts, it'll show you what lines are in that certain colored cut selection. So my black is all the inside stuff and my blue is the football and the circle line. And that's perfect. That's what I want. Because the first piece of wood I'm going to cut is going to be the football with the circle cut out of it. So I'm going to go over to library and I've already saved for plywood, this is a quarter inch birch plywood. I've already saved this settings, so I don't have to keep remembering what the laser likes to cut out. So I'm cutting through, I'm gonna click on cut through, and I'm gonna click on the line that I wanna cut through, which is both of these are gonna get the same settings because we're cutting through all of this. And I'm just gonna click assign to layer. And you can see my numbers, my speed and power has changed for the blue layer and I click on output on that one. I do not click output for the black because I want that to cut separately. So right now if I click start, it's only gonna click the blue lines. All right, I click frame down on the bottom and ran the laser head to see where it would cut and realized it's cutting my whole bed, but it's cut not cutting, it's overcutting the 24 by 24 inch piece of wood I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna translate 24 inches to millimeters. That gives me 609.6. So that is my boundary of what I can cut. So I'm gonna make a square, you can see, and I'm gonna make it 609 by 609 squared, 
and that is the piece of wood I have to cut out. So I'm going to bring it to the far left of the bed. That's where I'm going to start, and I'm going to make the football fit within the boundaries of that piece of wood. So you can see I'm just grabbing the football, I'm rotating everything so I can make it as big as I can from corner to corner, fitting it within that square. We haven't messed with any of the cut lines or anything, we just brought it in and twisted it and made it square. So now I'm finished with that blue square outline. I can delete that because I don't want to cut that. And now we're ready to frame it, make sure the laser head is going to move around. Framing makes the laser head move where it's going to cut without actually cutting. So you can make sure that it's cutting within the right spot. And that's what we just did with frame. And it looked and it framed perfectly well. So we're going to go ahead and hit start and make sure we just cut out the blue that has output selected. Let's cut this football out. All right, you can see we just cut out the football. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this file, save as uh, laser files. Parting. I like to save all my well, laser files. So I'm going to call this Harding Wild Cats Football Door Hanger. So I'm going to do that. And now that I'm finished, I'm going to edit some files. So we're going to turn off this. And we're actually going to move these blue lines. I'm going to delete the blue line and delete this blue line because we're finished with that. And I'm going to temporarily save this on my desktop as HAW and save it. So I need to cut this out, but I don't want to use a full sheet of plywood because I can cut out pieces. So what I'm going to use is the Lightburn camera and some scrap I have. Actually, the edges of what we just cut out and arrange these so it'll cut on that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it without any audio because right now I need to move my computer to be able to connect to the light burn camera because my USB cord is too short. So uh, just watch as I do that and I'll cut these out.
flip it over and laser on our logo on the back. That way everybody will know who made it. So I'm just going to go to open and uh, files, logo, and full logo, logo for branding. So all I do is bring in my logo as an SVG. I choose fill in the top because I want all the inside lines to be filled. And I already know the, the power and the speed for this um, here. So now we'll just hit uh, start, logo the back, and then we'll be done. All right, so we just finished lasering the back of that, and here is our finished piece. Uh, we got a cool 3D effect going on there. Got a good hole for hanging. And on the back we have our logo, so everybody knows who made it. Really hope this video helped you make something with your laser. It's really easy and really basic, but it's the beginnings and probably 90% of what you're gonna do with the laser. It's a money maker. So uh, if you have any questions about making a sign or anything laser or woodworking wise, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I always answer every single one of those. If you like this video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up down below and go wildcats. Happy cutting.